Hello, this is the Bible in fewer words. We are Carol and Steve Wells. This is episode 53, Leviticus, chapters 21 to 25. Hi, Steve. Hi, Carol. So it looks like 21 to 25 means more than one chapter. Yeah, five chapters. Yippee! Yeah, some of this is uh, we've covered before, so we're going to skip over it. And it will only include those things that are new okay. and different. All right. Ready? Mm-hmm. Verse 1. God said to Moses, Say this to the priests, the sons of Aaron. Don't marry a whore or a divorced woman, because priests are holy to me. So the only priests we know of are the sons of Aaron and the grandsons of Aaron. Yeah, I think that's the way it was set up. And he's, of course, Moses' brother. Mm -hmm. They're both Levites, but it's the sons of Aaron and his, his descendants that are going to be priests. Okay. Uh, so priests so the, are not to marry whores or divorced women. Right. <laughs> because <laughs> they're holy. To God. Okay. The next one's interesting. Verse 9 says, If your daughter plays the whore, burn her to death, because she has profaned you. And these are daughters of Aaron. Yeah. Okay. Well, daughters of, of Aaron or any of the priests. If a priest's daughter plays the whore, messing around. Sleeping somehow, around. Yeah. Uh -huh. Entering entering more than one red tent. I'm not sure what exactly playing the whore is, but whatever it is, if she does that, and she's a, the daughter of a priest, she has to be burned to death. All right, verse 11. Don't come near any dead bodies, not even your father or mother. You know, God doesn't like dead things, I don't think. Yeah, it kind of creeps him out, I think. So he wants this priest to stay away from dead bodies. The next verse says, don't profane your seed among the people, because I sanctify you. So that whole word profane, like, I'm not sure I know what that means. Yeah, especially profaning your seed among the people. Like sowing their with, seed. With other people? Yeah, I, I guess. I don't, I don't know. Because I sanctify you. So God God has made them special. So they He's can't made them just... special, holy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they can't just go around having sex with anybody. I think that's what it is, yeah. All right. Um, verse 17. Any man who has a blemish or is blind, lame, short, or has a flat nose or damaged testicles or broken hands or feet or a crooked back or who has scurvy or scabs or who has anything superfluous must not approach my altar. Yeah. All of these people are excluded. Okay. So I'm imagining tall and good looking men. So that's what it sounds like. Yeah. Okay, chapter 22. Stay away from holy things while you have your uncleanness upon you. And we've gone through all the things that make you unclean, at least a lot of them. Yes. And when priests have that, they need to stay away. Okay. Oh, and here are some examples. Mm -hmm. If a priest has leprosy or a running issue, do you want to talk about that for no, a while? No, I don't. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> or has touched an unclean dead thing. There we go again. Um, or has touched a man whose seed has gone from him and <laughs> fallen in the wrong place. That's my um, uh -huh. parenthetical. Or has touched a creeping thing. He is unclean until the evening and shall not eat the holy things until he washes his flesh with water. Okay, now we know again what's unclean. Yeah. No stranger or hired servant shall eat the holy things. But if a priest buys a slave, the slave can eat the holy things. Okay, so the priests sometimes share it with their family, you think? Yeah, I think so. But not strangers. So strangers would be non-Hebrews, okay. I think. And not hired servants. Right. But slaves, it, interestingly, a slave that a priest buys, I guess it's okay for a priest to buy a slave. And if he does, they can eat the holy things. Yep. But so far, slavery is just is approved as an institution. It's just that it's regulated. Yes. So, verse 20, don't offer me any animals that have a blemish. Oh, so these are the sacrifices. Yeah. Uh, so, a cow that has, you know, 
a little bump in his bones. Yeah, if there's something wrong out. with it, don't don't sacrifice it. Okay. They must not be blind, broken, maimed, diseased, or scabbed. Don't sacrifice animals to me that have anything missing or superfluous or is bruised, crushed, broken, or cut. Don't he, offer me any, any animals that you've obtained from, from strangers. Their animals are always filled with corruption and blemishes. I won't accept them. <laughs> well, that is bizarre, isn't it? Yeah. To say that all the animals of this certain race or strangers, they're crap. Yeah, and also that you would, that he would care so much about the details of the flaws that he won't accept. You, you know, we're killing animals in a bloody, messy, horrible sacrifice. Uh, but they have to be perfect but before you be sacrifice. Perfect. It's just so bizarre. Yes, it is. Okay, so I am looking here and we have chapter 23 that we are not going to talk about at all because we've probably already covered all those yeah, things. Yeah, we've talked about the, the Day of Atonement and we've talked about uh, the Passover mm -hmm. and various feast days, first fruits and stuff. There's a whole chapter here that I'm leaving out which is listing those feast days mm -hmm. and giving some information about them. It's there in chapter 23 of, of Leviticus, if you're interested. Okay. I wasn't, so I left it out. Chapter 24. Chapter 24, we have another thing that I'm leaving out, which is some cakes that they're going to bake for the Lord. Very special cakes. There's 12 of them and two rows of six. And there's some details there. I'm leaving that out as well. Okay. But now we get to something which... Um, I couldn't leave out. Verse 10. There was a fight between an Israelite man and a man whose mother was an Israelite, but whose father was an Egyptian. During the fight, the son of the Egyptian man cursed and blasphemed the name of the Lord. So they brought him to Moses and asked what to do about it. God said to Moses, Bring the man who cursed and let all the congregation stone him. Moses Mo said to the Israelites, Stone to death the man who cursed. And the Israelites did as God commanded Moses and stoned him to death. All right. We have no information here on what the man said that was considered blasphemous. But whatever it was, I guess they all were kind of in agreement about that. It was blasphemous. Yeah. But Moses didn't know what to do about it. They came to Moses and Moses said, I don't know, I'll ask God. So he asked God. And God told him, just flat out, stone him to death. Have everybody in the congregation stone him to death. And so that's what they did. So we know what God thinks. About blasphemy. And what should happen to blasphemers. Uh-huh. They should be stoned to death. Yeah, I mean, that's a really harsh, uh, crazy law. But there it is. If a man causes a blemish in his neighbor, the same blemish will be made on him. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth. Yeah. Okay. We've had that before, but I thought it was interesting. If, if you cause a blemish on your neighbor, like you maybe you cut his face or something, then your face will have to be cut, I guess, in the same place, in the same way. Yeah. It doesn't seem like a good good rule to me, but that's that's what we have here. I know. It's not what you'd want to tell your fourth grader. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So we are at chapter 25. Yeah. That was quick, huh? Yes. Okay. God said to Moses, Every seventh year is a Sabbath year, during which no crops may be planted or harvested. What are they going to eat during that year? Well, God's going to tell us about that later, but it's really interesting. A Sabbath year then would be, you know how the Sabbath is the seventh day? Yes. Well, a Sabbath year is the seventh year. So every seven years, there's supposed to be a Sabbath year, where we're not supposed to plant any crops. There should be, if this is a Sabbath year, let's say. Mm -hmm. then there should be no crops planted anywhere on earth for that whole year. You can't do any agriculture. You can't have any crops. Yeah. What are they going to eat? <laughs> it's going to come up here in a minute. But before that, we've got the uh, Jubilee year. Oh. Jubilee year. Every 50 years, blow a trumpet and announce a Jubilee year. Proclaim liberty throughout all the land. That's a nice thing. It is. It's yeah. like the 4th of July. Yeah. Don't grow or harvest any crops during the Jubilee year. All right. He's asking for a lot of no growing or harvesting. Yeah. And then we've got another good one here. Uh-huh. Don't oppress one another. 
If you're wondering what you're going to eat during the Sabbath and Jubilee years, don't worry. Be happy. <laughs> I, that's God, will uh -huh. make three times as much fruit, or I guess he really means crops or food. I will make three times as much fruit the year before so you can eat it. Great. I'm hoping that they're uh, able to preserve those so they don't go bad for the next yeah, year. Yeah, hopefully there's no drought the year before they have their You're Jubilee right. year or their Sabbath year. It wouldn't happen because God's going to guarantee three times as much food in the previous years so that you'll have something to eat during the Sabbath or Jubilee year. Hmm. I hope that all works out. Help the poor, even if they are strangers. Wow, that's nice. If your brother becomes poor and you buy him as a slave, treat him more like a servant than a slave and give him his freedom on the Jubilee year. Wow, that's like winning this lottery. Yeah, but it's a funny thing that to say if your brother is poor and you buy him as a slave, I suppose brother here is just like your neighbor, your fellow Hebrew. I hope so. Not like same father or same mother. Yeah, thing. I don't think it would be a sibling. I think it would be a um, friend or relative. Yeah. Buy some heathen neighbors for slaves. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so those Egyptians there, they're going to want to hang out there. Yeah, our Canadians, I think. <laughs> <laughs> they and their families are to be your possessions forever. Hmm. So they don't get to go free on the Jubilee year. No, on year. the Jubilee year or the Sabbath year. No. When you die, your children will inherit the heathen slaves as their possessions. Yeah. Lucky kids. It stays in the family. I guess so. Yeah. Cheapers. <laughs> okay. Well. That's the end of chapter 25 in this, this whole podcast. Yeah. I think I learned a few things today. Yeah. We've only got two more chapters in Leviticus. Oh. We'll do the next time. Great. All right. Thanks, Steve. Mm -hmm. Thanks, listeners. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.